And now, it's time for another episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A show made by 12s from around the world, for 12s around the world. I'm Ozen, and here is your host and my dad, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Mosette. And welcome to episode 616, the Rams-Packers double edition of your 12-man fan jam show as your Seattle Seahawks get ready to take on the Los Angeles Rams and the Green Bay Packers. That's right. Two. Two shows in one for you. And what can I tell you? If we just could have gone five more yards, we might be a little bit happier tonight. So glad to be here for this episode. Let's meet the posse. Of course, first, the ying to my yang from merry old England. It is Matt himself. Hi, Matt. Good morning, Moses. How are you? Fantastic. How are you, sir? Well, I think the second... You know, I said last week about the first sign of the apocalypse being it's not going to rain in Seattle. Well, the, the second sign of the apocalypse has just started here because it is absolutely throwing it out of the sky here. We've had lightning and all sorts. Throwing it out of the sky. I like it's, that it's a British term. We throw it out of the sky. You throw it out of the sky. Yeah. Are you That's okay? That's probably a reference to like rubbish, sure. Have you Rainy back and batten down hatches and all that good... I've battened down the hatches, I've locked the front door, and I've, I've, um, and I've thrown some uh, waste through down to the homeless people who live downstairs. So good. everything <laughs> is good. I'm all heart. Good. It's Have happy. you secured the jib-jab? <laughs> I was, the jib-jab has to jib-jab's be secured. secure. Jib-jab's okay. secure. I've got a, a drink. It's good. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Someone else on the posse is our new sound, Will. Hi, Will. Hi, Moses. How are you? Wonderful, sir. Yourself? Uh, well, rough week. I left the game last week wondering how things could possibly get any worse. And oh, no. six hours later was stricken with food poisoning. So no! I should really yeah. stop asking those kinds of questions. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how did Dodger dogs get into <laughs> the thing? Well no, I, I, no stadium food, oddly enough. So, ah. huh. Well, I, I'm glad you're feeling, you are feeling better, though. I am. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad Ugh. you could join us. And also, of course, there is Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hello, guys. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. Cheers. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Doing well. Good. Uh, like I said earlier to some of you guys off off air, if uh, you guys hear a random dog barking, I apologize. Uh, my mother-in-law is here. She showed up about an hour ago, and she has her puppy with her, and the puppy likes to randomly bark. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. What kind of pup? So, it's a golden retriever. Like oh. About four months old. Who's a good boy? Oh, he's a good boy. He's a big sweet, eh? Those are cute yep. pups. So if yeah. you if you want to know the answer to who let the dogs out, apparently it's Dustin's mother-in-law. Now, okay. how does <laughs> how does Kona react? I guess she doesn't feel threatened by. Uh... Well, you know what? Kona is not at home at, right now. She's no. away at college. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought she only wow. had her GED. She grew so fast. <laughs> yeah, You're Kona is. Kona is at a uh, training with a trainer. She's living with a trainer in training right now. And um, if you were friends on Facebook, I guess I'd throw them in the, in the Facebook thing for uh, the show too. But she is uh, doing really, really well with her training and going out there. She's less reactive and doing a really good job. Apparently she's a star student. She's All just right. a punk in the house. So well, maybe <laughs> that'll change. So Kona, when she graduates, we'll have a big graduation ceremony for her. That would be awesome. Is she, gonna, is she gonna wear the hat during graduation? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> you know what? I have a picture. I'll say I'll we can put that on the yes! show. Yes! Cool. Definitely. Well, good luck to Kona at college. We'll miss you already. God, they get so they grow up so fast. They do. Um they do. And and then of course our man behind enemy line, Statsman Mark. Hi, Mark. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Well, I'm 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 doing pretty good, all stones considered. <laughs> um, you know, along with the cyst, I forget oh, what that yes. was on my spleen. I, I yeah. love getting older; it's awesome. And, and I, I've already, you know, I've been more a little bit more proactive because I, I finally officially booked my very quick trip to Vegas. So All right, we hey. are on our way to the land of. Oh my goodness! I mean, Matt, have you been there? Have you ever been there, Matt? Vegas. This, 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 yes. Yeah. No. Oh my God! It's on my you list. Would just, it, it should be because you would just die laughing. I think you would have. Vegas I mean, is awesome. It is. It's just off. Like it's been 15 years. I only remember about half of that trip. So, 
you know <laughs> very yeah, nice I can, I, I can make amends while i'm in town it's like do you remember me 15 years ago yeah, <laughs> yeah um, when he said he gets arrested yep, yeah, right. actually, i do remember you you have the right to remain silent <laughs> you know what you don't know save me though in those days i was a happy drunk and i tipped well and so i show up the night <laughs> after <laughs> There you if go. you think well, I'm on a roll at times for this show, you should see me. You know when I was yeah, you know, really almost semi blackout because I came. I come back to the Tiki Bar. I love that. It, of course, it's the Tiki Bar wait, at the Imperial is... Palace. <laughs> did you and say the bartender? The... Wait, did you say oh. the Tiki Bar? I did. My favorite drink. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, and then the, and, and then the the bartender gives me the double point fingers with a big smile, like he's Isaac from the Love Boat. And I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. I go, what happened? He's like, dude, you were easily, you were awesome, man. And I go, did I tip you okay? He's like, oh, yeah, you were good. You know, I'm like, oh, God, thank God. Better than somebody running at you with a fist. So, amen. Yeah. So amen. I will be there. And, uh, you know, wow, just All right. to be an American cheese ball for 36 hours in Vegas. Yeah. It. Well, listen, then we better start the show so we can, uh, we can, we, while well, we still have you, because apparently <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen after Vegas. So, well, I'll be uh, here for the show. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Fergie, let's get to it, shall we? Let's get it started in here. Yes, if you've never heard us before, the show's run like a real NFL football game. We have four quarters and a halftime. A little different because it's a double episode for this episode. Um, quarter one, we are going to recap that game against Chargers Sunday. And then we'll, at the end of the first quarter, this show will go over our challenge scores. So we'll have a two-minute warning in the first quarter, which is a little unusual. Second quarter, we are going to go through some info for the Rams game for sure. Obviously, we can't really do much with the Packers game because it's going to depend on what happens Sunday with the Rams game. And by the time we record our next show, both games will play. So that means halftime is, of course, the best Seahawks-themed trivia game on the Internet. I refer to 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. Of the world. Of the world. And I believe Dustin is our returning champ. Uh, yeah, cause I because I study. Yeah, because he studies. So we'll see how well he does. And by studies, well, he means Google. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, you got to no. Google to find the page to study from. But And uh, I'll be honest here. I yeah. did not study it all this week. Last well, week, I got a lot of flack. So I'm yeah. going in blind for a minute. All so. right. Well, we'll see. So it's an even playing field. Yep. Um, quarter I three. studied like fuck. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go figure. Now we'll see who wins. Um, Probably quarter- Mark. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's the correct answer be is 1,064. <laughs> <laughs> point, uh, point yeah. 0.5. Yeah. And 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm plus 500 on the money line to win trivia tonight, so it's a good payout if it happens. Good payout. Nice. Good payout nice. if it happens. Well, we'll see. Uh, quarter three, we'll do our predictions, prognostications, and game balls for the Rams game Sunday. Then fourth quarter, we'll do our predictions, game balls, and prognostications for the Packers game on Thursday. So it's going to be interesting because obviously two games away, you don't know what's going to happen. But before we do start, we'd like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Join our Facebook group, 12 Man Fan Jam Show. We do have a great game day thread on there and do some other fun stuff. We're also on Twitter and email is 12 Man Fan Jam Show at gmail.com. Look for this downloadable podcast to take with you on iTunes and Podbean. I encourage you to do that because you can listen to a quarter while you're doing the dishes. And then maybe the next day you can listen to the second quarter while you're folding laundry or whatever. Um, and that's that's so it's on iTunes and Podbean. And OK, let's start the first quarter. OK, the first quarter in this episode, we are going to look back on last week's loss to the Chargers, 25 to 17. Um, missed it by a yard, or really six yards, I guess, with the penalty included. Uh, it was a close game. They they fought to the end. They they brought it down to the very last play of the game. Uh, Matt, give me something. Give me something positive from this game. Oh, I like the opening drive. And that's pretty positive. Oh, surgical, wasn't it? It was yeah, beautiful. It was amazing. I mean, you know, and that's. I have to say, when I saw that drive, I sort of thought to myself, "Here we go again. It's give you another one of those, you know, perfect QB rating type of, yeah, you know, perfect football games." And you would um, think so. And then I blinked, and 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 bugger me, we lost. Yeah. Um, it all sort of went south after that. But I think yeah. the opening drive was fantastic. Opening drive was. I had a friend as a Vikings fan, and he 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 texted me one word: surgical. And I think that pretty much described it: surgical. It was just the most beautiful drive I've ever seen in my life. And then capped off by one of the best touchdown celebrations in the history of oh, mankind. Yeah. 
just fantastic. That was amazing. And I did not know until I saw mic'd up with, with Russell Wilson that while they were doing that, Russell was on the side acting like he was taking pictures the whole time. They didn't show that part. <laughs> but nice. he was mic'd up, and he and Blitz were over on the side, and he had to act like a fake camera in front of his face mask, and he was taking pictures of him while they were doing it. So even <laughs> even better. So, nice. Yeah, very well choreographed. Dustin, give me a positive from this game. Uh, well, other than the first drive, eh, there's a lot to um... – I mean, it's hard to find something, but I'd say resiliency. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they were they came out good. Uh, it kind of went to hell after that. There's a lot of injuries they had to deal with. Um, mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. What I said about Russell was that uh, I think he celebrated his best game of the season by eating a ton of fiber during the week because he was <laughs> shitting all over the field. <laughs> <laughs> Not and, his best uh, effort. Hey, no. I'm bleeding yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but. Somehow, some way, it, oh, and the yeah, the, the run game defense was hurting them too. But somehow, some way, they found a way to get back into the game and be in a position at the end of it to possibly force overtime. So right. I mean, just the resiliency of the team. There's yeah. no give up in that crew, which is yeah. something you really want. It's not a Raiders team where they just give up on the coach and right. don't do anything. They, these guys believe in what they're doing and they're trying to win games. And I think that's important because they're showing that they want to fight for their coach. And yep. that is important to see because I think in the Mora era, and I won't get, even think about the Mora era, but oh, to gosh. me it felt like <laughs> the players quit on Mora during the season when they would fall behind. A 10-point deficit become a 30-point deficit because they just didn't try. This is almost the opposite of that. These guys are fighting for Carroll, and that's important to see because that means he, he very much is still in control of that team in the locker room. Uh, Will, just give me something positive. Oh. Quick related Jim Mora era story. I remember oh, no. when they were doing a fan appreciation day, they sent out a survey asking what sorts of uh, things we would want to see. And I wrote back and said an apology. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. But, and um, then didn't you get one for the kicker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I but, got right over by the bus that Mora was driving. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, Similar to um, what Dustin was saying, uh, you know, Russell Wilson is a quarterback, um, obviously immense talent, can do amazing things, has his flaws like every other quarterback who's ever played the game. Um, I think, honestly, my favorite uh, trait of, of Wilson's is his ability to shake off bad plays. Yes. That uh, pick six in the fourth quarter, the second – the ball left his hand. I could just, I, I had a perfect view of the whole thing. And <laughs> as soon as he threw it, it's like, uh, well, crap. Because yeah. he just, you just knew what was going to happen. And, yeah. And, you know, and after that pick six, he played some of his best football of the game. Uh, he apart sure from did. The, apart from the opening drive. I, I think mean, on it the, was. On the, on the game dad thread, I put game, set, match at that point. Yeah. And I mean, um, the offense as a whole was still sputtering. They were badly missing Chris Carson. Um, it just never really got into gear, but he he got him down the field twice after that yeah. and uh, you know shook off that that horrid interception. I thought that was pretty impressive. That was. Um, Zorni, you got a positive? Well, I think, didn't we hit, a, a, I don't remember, I thought maybe my prognostication was, do we hit over 150 yards rushing again? Team I believe rushing? we did. Mike Davis had over 100. But that I was think, not your prognostication he? this time. Really? Yeah, it was. That wasn't your prognostication. It was last time, Zorn. Oh, but, well, but, see, oh, boy. See, the, but the, the lamp did. is I dim. Mike, Mike Davis had a 100 yard day. No, no, no. Oh, my lamp no, Mike is... Davis did have a 100 yard day, but I think we had 150 yards rushing. Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the lamp is only burning dimly. Um, no, you know, I've had, I, yeah, the run game worked. Um, I, what's weird about that first drive is like, you know how it's like one and no every week in terms of games. It's, it's, I wish they got into this mentality of first drive every time we're out there, because it's so weird how like the opening drive can be like all this diversity stuff going on. It's looking so well. And then the rest of the game, you know, there's quarters that go by where you don't, you know, yeah. see another drive. You're like right. I don't, I don't really, get, I mean, I, I know it's scripted, and I, and I know that the Rams' defense is getting kind of an idea of what we're doing, so they haven't adjusted and all that. But it, it just seems like, uh, you know, um, I don't know. It, yeah. it was a lot like our know. last playoff game in Atlanta. I mean, we drove down um, after uh, 
20, uh, 2016. Uh, we drove down and scored on the opening drive in that yeah. in that game too, and then the rest of that game stunk. So it's it's yeah, really weird yeah, how it happens that's right. sometimes. Yeah. Yep, that's very true. Um, I I like to say that I think um, for me one of the positives for this game overall is just the fact that we have a running game. <laughs> and, and it's just fun to see this team, you know, run the ball again, which is nice just overall. And, and Davis did have 62 yards on 15 carries. So that's pretty good. That's 4.1. You know, well, not bad compared to what we used to, you know, five carries for 10 yards or whatever. Um, you know, obviously Chris Carson's going to be missed and we'll talk about that next quarter, but, um, if he's not going to play, but I, you know, I just like to see the fact that we have a running game is nice. And, and, and to me, that's, that's a good positive. Uh, Matt, real quick, something to, that you didn't like. Um, I think the uh, last but one drive, whatever it was, where we had six minutes left on the clock. What happened to the urgency? It, yeah. we, we were two scores. I think it was two scores down. Really good them. point. Really good. And point. I'm yeah. like, all of a sudden, we can just amble up. We'll, yeah. you know, we'll, yeah. we'll throw to the center. We'll throw to the center of the field and complete in the center of the field where we can't get out of bounds. We can't stop a clock, and we just can't do anything other than than eat yeah. our own clock up. And I, I, I got to the point where I was just like. You don't want to win this clearly because you even if you yeah. are moving down the field you're doing it in such a way to make sure that you've got like four seconds left on your next goal yeah that's a good point good point dustin uh well the first thing i noticed was bad in that game i have to say that uh, i was highly disappointed that tyler lockett has not shaved his head yet um, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you guys saw that when they're going to commercial tyler lockett and russell wilson sitting on the bench and Lockett was kind of looking down the dude needs to shave his head. That right. receiving hairline is really, really bad. Okay. So, yeah. But, uh, I mean. Yes. I just, uh, uh, yeah. The, well, like what Matt was saying, when the game counted, they were not up there running. They were not trying to uh, to win the game, it felt like. Because if, if that's your hurry-up offense and that's what you're going to do when you have time limited on the clock, that's not going to win you games. Yeah. I mean, throwing to the middle of the field is understandable in a way because they're going to defend the outside and the sidelines because you get out of bounds under four minutes and a half, and they're going to stop the clock. So yeah. middle of the field's open. But they were there was no hustle, and it should have happened much earlier than than at the end of the game. So that yeah. was that was pretty disappointing in all honesty. Yeah. And then the injuries, just yeah. the injuries were really disappointing. You lose. Key guys like Fluker, McDougal, and um, Carson. Well, Carson, yeah. Yeah, that is just, that is rough. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we'll see in the injury report how uh, that may affect us coming up. Uh, Will, negative? Um, real quick, uh, other positive I forgot to bring up. Um, very classy tribute to Paul Allen before the game. Yes. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Can I just, oh, yeah, can man, I, real yeah. quick, I, I want to say my, my wife is in the kitchen and we have an open concept, so we got the kitchen and the TV room are kind of together, <laughs> and we're watching the game. And when they announced, it, I all three of us, my son, my wife, and I stopped, looked at each other, made a sad face, and we all just started bawling. And I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, full blown, all of us, full blown tears. I'm choking up thinking about it again. I started yeah. laughing and said, "This is a stupid football game," and I'm crying like a three year old. And my son turned to me, and goes, "Dad, it's not a football game." Guy lost his life. I said, "You're right." I mean, a great man lost his life. Yeah, same and thing all too. I, I had tears just down my bawled. face. We bawled. I'm I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I had tears rolling down my face. Actually, oh. I turned. I don't. They didn't. I, you couldn't hear on TV, but I turned to my wife and I was like, "I wouldn't surprise if in the stadium right now they're doing the thank you, Paul chance." I don't know if they did or not. I don't but, know if they did or not. But just when the flag went up, I just I fell apart. I'm yeah. I'm getting for Clem just talking about it right now. Um, yeah. Well done, Will. I'm sorry. Negative. Um. For all the talk, and rightfully so, about how uh, resilient this team was, how they kept fighting, even if uh, they were not doing a very urgent job of it, it does need to be said that if it weren't for the fact that uh, the Chargers were starting Blair Walsh's illegitimate son at kicker, true, the game would have been over after the pick six. That's I mean, the guy mm -hmm. threw... Uh, yeah. Field goal, two extra points, You're right. and then managed to get a tripping penalty on a kickoff, which yeah. I have never <laughs> seen before. Um, I like that. That guy single-handedly kept us in the game. That's true. Um, by rights, <laughs> it should have been done. Here's You're right. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Zorny, what do you got for a negative? Well, and I just, from a fan perspective, I'm just what a frustrating game to watch. Oh, it was. 
go yeah. on. And, and then and then we still I've just and then yet we, we come back like Jason Voorhees. We still have this final drive. <laughs> Nice. And we're on the brink. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. I'm yeah, like, yeah but like, Jason Voorhees in one of the later Friday the Thirteenth movies. It's kind yeah. of uh, this is not working anymore. Yeah. Right, right. But it's yeah. I just it's man, it was Freddy so close. And, and, and then it, I know the pass to more. I thought initially it was tipped. Was it? Did, it was. Did, it was it tipped it very ice, slightly. Actually, yeah. okay. So it did kind of. All right. Anyway, um, you know, well, there. Uh, you know, I think uh, I posted about it. Um, on the page, uh, you know, our run, our run defense, I thought would be a little bit more. So many huge um, gaps. Oh they my were God, averaging, that's the way, that's the way the you run it quarter, in practice. Third, I mean, pick, yeah. pick a hole. I mean, it just, that was exactly. crazy. And, 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 you know, that, you know, that killed me. Um, yeah. They and were, and average, I they were on run that. defense is a great call. On yeah. That. Yeah. I, I, I focus more on that. You know, the, the way this game was wrapped, I mean, you know, we, we saw that too, but what was interesting is San Diego had more, penalties against them than we did believe it or not interesting yeah um, but when well, i called came about five and the type... of them on our last two drives so yeah True. anyway but um the run defense i thought yeah. would be a little bit better i knew rivers you know rivers is is a good qb and he knows how to uh, pick apart a young secondary you know and, and and our defense is good but philip rivers has been doing he can do this in his sleep and and uh, yeah. and they're a good team you know yeah they'll probably find a way to blow it later on but the chargers especially with no home True home field. I mean, yeah. there'll be more. If this game were in San Diego, it'd be a home game for us down there too. So I've learned to respect the Chargers oddly yeah. enough. Ever since they had to bail, because uh, they're probably more comfy in our stadium than in a soccer stadium, and you know, in, in East LA or wherever it is. True. <laughs> well, uh, they're, they, they're well posed to be a wild card team because they're going to have to go are. on the road in the playoffs, Definitely. and they're used it, to going on the road amen. wherever they play. It, if yeah. they had, if they had Bosa, and if they, if that team got somebody like Earl Thomas, that'd be very interesting for them. It would. Well, not really. He's on the IR, man. He can't play. Well, I mean, yeah, that's Brooklyn. true. <laughs> well, I mean, you're right. I should have. Well, know, it the, would the, be the, interesting. Lamp was doing so well. I was so yeah. brightly, if they were willing to play him, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was late in the third quarter, and they were averaging 9.8 yards a play. And that's not funny. Uh, yep. That's a fact. Yeah. And that's yeah. – you can't win when you give up 9.8. Even though we can, yeah. we're we not going into yeah. this, but we could talk about the refing. We're not going uh, to. We no, mentioned it. We're no not going it. to. No but 9.8 yards a play is not all the refs' fault. And that, well, and that was late in the third. Right, but I wouldn't say that that was – um, just against us, though, because they were just terrible all around. They were just bad all the way around. Yeah, yep. fair enough. Um, let's do two minute warning. Holy sh! It's a two minute warning. All right, the post prediction challenge. First, the scores last week. The score was seventeen twenty five. A uh, point to Mike Pascal. He had twenty six twenty three. That's about the closest name I got. Uh, prognostications: Little Mo, uh, Seattle, more than one hundred twenty five yards rushing yards. He got that on prognostications. Game ball, nobody. Uh, the over and under was under. Point to Mark Ty Turner, Tom, and Will. I mean, week eight looks like this. Little Mo with one. Mark Ty Turner with one. Mike Pascal with one. Tom with one. Will with one. I'm Scores sensing a after, theme here. Yeah. Will is at, after eight games. <laughs> Little Mo still on top. Little Mo is 17. Mike Mas Pascal 15. Mark Ty Turner 14. Will at 13. Statsman Mark Dustin and Moses still at 12. Jose and Tom at 11. Matt at nine, which means <sighs> going into this, these two games... Team 12, 69. Team Posse, 57. It's only eight points. Perverts. So we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, now let's end the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Coming up on this double dip edition of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show, halftime trivia, a double prediction extravaganza. But next, it's info about the Rams game, and that's right after this. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. I like it! Holy sh! It's the second quarter. Second quarter of your episode 616, the double down version, double episode of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Double your pleasure, double your fun. And also, <laughs> maybe, just maybe, you double the intrigue. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, Brady Bunch, you never let us down. We have two games coming up between now and, and next time we record. The first is in Los Angeles against the Rams, and I checked this. It is a 425 Eastern Standard Time kickoff. 
which means it's a 125 Seattle time kickoff. Matt, that puts it what? 1984 for you guys or something? It puts it at 25 minutes past nine in the evening. Okay. Me. There you go. Well, so for our UK Seahawker fans, day. of which there are a couple, 9.25 p.m. for you all. Yeah. All right. So let's see how healthy the Rams and Seahawks are by turning to our own doctor, Dr. Dustin, with a 12-man fan jam show injury report. Dr. Dustin, tell us the news. Dr. Dustin, give me the news. Oh, 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 oh. Dr. Dustin. All right. So the Seahawks, we have seven players questionable. First one is Chris Carson. He's got the hip injury he's been dealing with. Took him out of the game last week. We have DJ Fluker, who's got a calf injury. Um, that's been kind of a thing for him as well. Bradley McDougal has a knee injury. Questionable. Uh, Shamar Stevens has a foot thing he's been dealing with. Uh, Jordan Simmons has a calf injury he's been dealing with. And then KJ Wright was limited in practice a couple times this week and didn't practice and uh, he also has uh, he's has questionable status. Um, I fully expect him to play though. That's just kind of what they're doing with him right now. Yeah, because I think of the that's surgery what doing. that he had. Right. Yeah, and Azir Jones is questionable. It says it's not injury related; it's an illness. Hmm. And uh, this is this has been a concern. We we yeah. assumed earlier this year that he wasn't playing because there was possibly like an attitude issue or something yeah. wrong with the team. But uh, they listed him with an illness this week. So he might have something going on that's bigger than football. So hopefully hopefully everything's okay with that guy. And Wasn't I he the one well. that when he was 16, like he couldn't get out of bed that one time? Yes, that was yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. So I want we'll to keep an eye on that. That's sad. I hope it's not true. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just hope they're just throwing some smoke out there to – Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, doubtful. Nico Thorpe, he still has a small groin. So, <laughs> <laughs> and That's then, a uh, gag now. and then the important things: McDougal, Chris Carson, Fluker, uh, Pete Carroll said they're all game time decisions. So we'll see mm. what happens. Honestly, I don't expect Carson to play. Uh, yeah. I kind of don't expect Fluker to play, but I would imagine McDougal will play. Yeah. See how it goes. Okay. And then, um. DJ Procise, of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. He came down this week with a case of fluttering eye syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is fluttering eye syndrome? This is when a patient is faking unconsciousness. He developed <laughs> this when he f- – was that? Go ahead. No, I'm laughing. Uh, I-, I was saying this is, a, this is when a patient is faking unconsciousness, and he developed this when he found out that he may have to play because Carson might be out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy yeah. it's cj pro side never and that's never, the injuries guys yeah excellent well done well done dr justin <laughs> this is unbelievable because the really there's nothing on the rams they were teasing us with a couple but you know not play not practicing well they didn't practice girly because he's just so dang on tired from running the ball so much and same with a couple other guys, yeah. So yeah. there's no, they're they're completely healthy, which is just wonderful. Um, I mean, the only guys they're missing is the guys they were missing the time we played them. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at what the weather's going to be for this game by turning to a guy living in another country. Yes, it's time for the Twelve Man Fan Jam Show weather and fashion report with Matt from Merry Old England. Oh, Matt. It's raining, it's raining, it's yeah. Thank you, Moses. Now. I don't know whether you noticed, but large parts of California are kind of on fire at the moment. And apparently that could play a little bit into the air quality of this game. So, yeah, the weather for the 125 Pacific Time kickoff looks to be clear and sunny, with temperatures of at least 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit where the flames are, (laughs) and 74 degrees Fahrenheit where the stadium is. Oh, perfect. Uh, Winds are supposed to be light from the north and northeast, but no idea if smoke may cause issues, but I'm pretty sure the NFL and the teams themselves will be checking air quality before and during the game, I would have thought. so. I would think. It depends. If the game gets kicked off, I'm sure it will get played, but I think Mm -hmm. that I don't, I can't imagine that they would sort of you know stop the game halfway through but you never know it depends if the winds change or anything crazy happens exactly you never know this could be i mean it's something worth keeping an eye on there's no doubt i mean we we joke about that but yeah no 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 joke this is a serious thing so yeah we'll keep an eye on that as for what to wear for this game well short of full fire fighting gear and breathing apparatus this is los angeles so immediately i go to large sunglasses and floppy sun hats and really tight denim shorts just throw a (laughs) hawks jersey over that and you're all set really um (laughs) 
as for me, if I was going to go to this game, well, for once, I wouldn't go to a game in a dress or anything weird like that. Because it's Los Angeles. And that wouldn't get me any weird looks at all. <laughs> in fact, people might just think I was Caitlyn Jenner. Oh! And, no and, nobody at the moment, and nobody at the moment wants to be mistaken for Caitlyn Jenner. No. I mean, what, 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 just imagine if Kanye, or Ye, as he's now decided to call himself, mistook me for Caitlyn and started talking to me. Oh. Or worse, still singing at me. No. Oh. Don't know. No, at oh. this game, I'm just going to go in my usual Seahawks fan gear. Just like, you know, just a jersey. Better safe than sorry. Completely blend in. Mm. But that being cool. said, it looks like it's going to be perfect Seahawks weather. So, Moses, it's back over to you. Thank you. And, and a great report. And I think most of the people going to that game will be dressed up as Seahawks fans. I have a feeling. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, now... Uh, we're going to go to the guy that always has our numbers, the man with numbers and tokens all around him. It's time for Statsman Mark <laughs> and the 12-Man Fan Jam Show. Buy the numbers for our game and maybe a couple of teasers, Mark? Well, first, I, I want to go back to this precise thing because it just every time that name is said on the injury report, it's just like it's like Chevy from the original SNL. You know, General Francisco Fran is Felicio still dead. Is still dead. It's just, <laughs> every, it's and, just and Marco never... CJ Procise is still on the team. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Procise. Um, yeah, I just, I just Procise. don't. Yeah, it's like he's. It just. There should be a statue, like, or RW should open the CJ Procise <laughs> Hospital for the <laughs> mysteriously injured. Or, I mean, uh, yeah. Perfect. If he had a statue, it would just be him in a hospital bed with his leg yeah. up, like, instead yeah. of, like, a pose. But, yeah, anyway. Um, so, numbers. Let's see. So, last week, uh, I should have just faded myself because I went 0 3. I guess that's not. <laughs> no, it's too terrible. Shot. But. Believe it or not, I'm still 11, 15, and 1 on the year. Only several games wow. under 500. Wow. <laughs> so kind of like a kind of like a Mariners, you know, after like a month. Oh, and, no. Anyway, wow. um, again, okay. address all those comments to Statsman Mark here, 12 Man Fan Jam Show yeah. at gmail.com. Hey, I, I I do wish the ends well. <laughs> okay, so picks. So you know, a little bit of a limb here. So the first pick, uh, you know what? Big win for them last week against the Rams. I I think that. The Saints go into Cincy, and that's a whole lot closer of a game than people would think. So mm -hmm. I have Cincinnati plus six and a half. I have our own beloved Seahawks because we're getting 10 points. Ooh, <laughs> and okay. I do think this game is going to be competitive. Um, and finally, uh, you know, they're lining up around the block to play the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and <laughs> next up is Philadelphia, and they're going to cover six and a half in Philly. And so those are your three picks. Please beware uh, placing any real money on this. Um, yes. Or you can yes. fade me completely, and maybe you win that way too. But <laughs> they are lining up around the block to play the Cowboys. I love it. It's just it. right out of airplane. All these different weapons, bats, you know, <laughs> a, a brick. They're just waiting. Yeah, sledgehammer. Um, yeah, and let me go ahead and say that real quick. The quick disclaimer: these numbers have been presented for entertainment purposes only. The 12 Man Fan Gym Show does not endorse betting on anything at any time. Please do not take these or anything we show ever say on the show seriously ever in our lives. Uh, what was the over under for our game, Mark? Did you get that? Oops. I did. Hold on. You're right. Jeez. Let's see. Uh, so I mentioned the plus 10 already over under 51 and a half. Woo! So they are expecting, you know, a little bit of scoring in the Ram. Well, we'll, we'll get in you know, to whatever. I mean, the Ram yeah. defense is, you know, they're a good yeah. team, but they do give up, you know, give up points. So. They do. They do. All right, Mark. Thank you so much. Gee. Um, And of course, the Thursday night game, they're playing the Packers. There's not a whole lot we can discuss about that. It's going to be a home game. Um, against the Packers on Thursday Night Football. Quite a history between those two teams, especially in Seattle, where we had won an NFC Championship against them. And, of course, the ever-popular was it a touchdown or was it a not Hail Mary uh, from a few years ago with replacement refs. But we're going to go ahead and go to halftime. Holy sh! it's halftime. Coming up, so much more. Isn't there a few laws against ramming it? Should we just pack it in how cheesy can i get <laughs> yes <laughs> all these answers and more just around the corner but first another fine edition of 12 man fan jam show halftime trivia and that's coming up next you're listening to the 12 man fan jam show <laughs> 
a Seahawk Positivity production. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawk theme trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And here's your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another fine edition of 12 Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. Of the world! The trivia game that tests the knowledge of both our posse and our listeners. Our contestants are the posse themselves, Dustin, Statsman, Mark, Matt, and Will. And here are the rules. So here's how the trivia game works. There'll be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there'll be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tie players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12-man fan jam show trivia champion and also gets a prize chosen especially for them. As an added bonus to those listening on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well. If you do, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please... No wagering. However, there is a lifeline. Before taping this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take the quiz as well. If the contestants want to know what the kids said, they can ask that but once and only once during the entire game show and only in the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. <laughs> All right, y'all know the rules. You know how this goes. <laughs> that was bad. It was bad. <laughs> We're playing the Rams. I thought I had to throw that in there somewhere during the show. I thought uh, Dennis was just saying he's the goat as far as no, <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. None of that. All right. Uh, remember, you can ask the kids once, uh, but only once during the first two rounds, a point each. And we'll start the first round. The topic and round one is obviously the Rams and the Seahawks. Three of the four questions are the Rams and the Seahawks. Uh, Dustin, one, two, three, or four? Uh, four. Okay. Uh, Matt, one, two, or three? I honestly thought he was going to pick them all. Just to be really well, no. On, what uh, I was thinking, I was doing the same thing. I was like, Matt won me. last week. Maybe <laughs> Matt should pick first. That's what I was thinking. Oh, my I'll God. I'll go two, please. He's thinking way too much. The better. perfect gentleman. Uh, Mark, <laughs> one or three? One. And Will? Five. Okay, you get three. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, your first question. This is a football question about the Seahawks and the Rams. All right. The last time the Seahawks beat the Rams in Los Angeles was 2017. Um, who had the most receptions for the Seahawks in that game? Most receptions, Doug Baldwin, Jimmy Graham, or Paul Richardson? Yeah, we just talked no. about Richardson in the off uh, between the quarters here. Richardson out for the year with the uh, with the Redskins, but uh, Baldwin, Graham, or Richardson, who had the most catches in no. that game in 2017? I'm gonna say Graham. You're gonna say Graham? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Mosette said Graham. Little Mo said Richardson. You said Graham. There it is. Oh, my goodness. It was. Graham with six, Baldwin with four, Richardson with three, Mark on the board. Look what at was that. the final in that game? Huh? What was the final in that game? Was that, I don't was like 16-10. Yeah. yeah something that's like that. what I thought. Okay. Yeah, something like that. How many did Graham drop in that game? All right. Very funny. Matt, here you go. <laughs> yeah, ready. Matt, Ouch. just for that, your question is not – it's a Rams question oh. only. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you might get this. I don't know. You probably, I don't know. I'm not Welsh. What college did how, all the Rams go to? Yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> in Fahrenheit, how, no. Um, oh. How many feet is it from? No, here's your question. How, how many NFC championships have the Rams won? How many NFC championships have the Rams won? Two, three, or four? NFC championships, oh. two, three, or four? Oh, what crumbs. Um, four? You say four? Yeah. What's the question? Really, I said it really four, timidly. Four? Four? <laughs> uh, Mosette and Lomo said two. You said four? 
I didn't know why I said it like that. I no, no. Three. They they won the ones we all know about, 99 and 2001, but they also, 1979, with Vince Ferragamo at quarterback. Vince Ferragamo. Yeah, Vince Ferragamo. Three. So. Oh, uh, well. Uh, yeah. Those are the days, Matt, Didn't he play wore... the Hulk in, like, the 70s TV series? <laughs> Uh, that's no, Lou Ferrigno. That's Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> yeah, oh. It's close, though. Close, no, close enough for, to have a question about Ferragamo that. Ferragamo would have been more like on the uh, old show, like Emergency. Like oh, the old yeah, fire definitely, department definitely. Show, Something like that. No, Vince yeah. Ferragamo, it was oh. awesome. Those, those were the disco days where the dress shirt oh. collar was as big and wide as the, oh, as the yes. coat collar. It folded over. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he, he played the part. All he was missing was a mustache, a big old 70s mustache. Yeah. Will. Yes, sir. Last time, the, uh, the last time the Seahawks. The first time, I'm sorry, the first time the Seahawks played the Rams in Los Angeles was 1976. Do you remember that? I was not alive, so okay. no. <laughs> well, the leading rusher for the Seahawks that day was Don Testerman. And Don Testerman seems to be on our show a lot. Don Testerman, leading rusher for that game for the Seahawks. How many rushing yards did he have as the leading rusher for the Seahawks? Was it 15, 20, or 25? That's right. <laughs> the leading rusher for the Seahawks had either 15, 20, or 25 yards. Well, I, if memory serves, this was a particularly wretched game. So I'm going to go. It sounds like uh, it, don't it? I'm going to go with 15. Oh, my God. I tell you, either one of those is not worth it. Uh, 15. Okay. <laughs> but it was on two carries. So Mos- awesome. <laughs> Mosette. <laughs> Mosette said 15. Uh, Lil Mo said 20. You said 15. Yeah. 15 yards. Wasn't rusher. that the game where the team as a whole finished with negative seven yards? I believe that's correct. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, he was leading so rusher awesome. with 15 yards. Unbelievable. Uh, Dustin. Awesome. Isn't that fun? Dustin, uh, the first time the Seahawks beat the Rams on the road in St. Louis was 1997. <laughs> oh, I was who, alive, so that's good. Okay, that's good. good. <laughs> who, that was a great game. Who was the leading rusher for the Seahawks on that day? The leading rusher, was it Steve Broussard, Lamar Smith, or Chris Warren? That's a pretty good group. Steve Broussard, Lamar Smith, or Chris Warren? Who led the Seahawks in rushing against the Rams that day? I like Chris Warren. I met him at tailgate a couple times. I'll go with Warren. All right. You're going to go with Warren. Um, Mosette went with Lamar Smith. Little Mo went with Chris Warren as well. You, you went with him as well. No. Sorry. It's Steve Broussard, believe it or not. Uh, all, was yeah. Warren even with the team by then? Yeah, was he still yeah they playing? were. Here's the, the Broussard had 41 yards. Chris Warren had 37 yards. And Lamar Smith had 21 yards. But uh, it was that rare moment mm. when Lamar Smith was on our team before we traded him to the Packers and he get like 2,000 yards a year. But uh, the memories. All right. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Will has a point and Mark has a point. And Matt and Will are looking to even things up. So we will start with Mark. Five, six, seven, or eight? Six. Mark says six. Will? I will go eight. Okay. Matt? I'll go seven. Dustin, that means you're leading us off. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> Like um, the, the topic worst now. Me. I hate now that. we now we turn to the Packers and the Seahawks. That's and awesome. one question All is right. not Packers and Seahawks. Um, Dustin, your question is Packers and Seahawks. <clears throat> the first time the Seahawks. Lance Easley was the guy that called no. the touchdown. Sorry, the la- the last time the Seahawks beat the Packers in Seattle in the regular <laughs> season was 2014. That famous game. Um, how many times did the Seahawks sack Aaron Rodgers in that game? Was it two, three, or four? Oh, oh man, I thought it was six. So I'll say four. I'll say four. Um, Mosette and Little Mo both said three. You said four. Nah, it was three. Damn it. Yeah. Well, I did get to have uh, drinks with uh, Lance Easley, who's the guy that called touchdown at the end of it. So that was kind of cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I remember you talking game. about that. Yeah. Fa- Fail Mary game was in 2012. Oh, yeah. 2014 yeah, right. was mm-hmm. the uh, season opener. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 oh, yeah, right. oh okay, okay. Yeah, see, that's why you're confused. Because, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark. Mm-hmm. Numbers. Numbers and yeah. math and shit. You guys yeah. aren't supposed to talk to me about math. All right. We won't. <laughs> hey, Mark. It's in my contract. 
The first time the Seahawks beat the Packers in Seattle was 1987. How many interceptions did Dave Craig throw on that day? Two, three, or four? <laughs> Even though they won. Figures. Even though they won. I love How many them. interceptions did Dave Craig throw? Two, three, or four? Nineteen eighty-seven. Wow. Mudbone. Yeah. Wow. So wow, I was a senior in high school. Let's see. I was drinking even then. Um, <laughs> smoking too. Uh, let's see. Good old Dave Craig. Oh, I'm going to ask the kids what they say. Oh, okay. Seeing uh, how they were around. Mosette said two. Yeah. <laughs> Mosette said two and little Mo said three. Hmm. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'll go with, uh, I'll go with two. You're going with two? Yep. All right. You're going with Mosette, huh? <laughs> You're going with Mosette, huh? No. Oh. It was three. Ugh. He threw three interceptions. They won anyway. I didn't All think right. he could throw three and still win. Maybe yeah, that was I guess whole, you can. Old trick. All right, Matt. <laughs> it was yes. a strike year. Things were Yours weird. Yours is a Seahawk and Packer game. That's right. That means for Will. But Will, you know what? Oh, we'll talk about it in a minute. Matt. Yes. The Seahawks beat the Packers in Seattle in 2012. We all yes. remember the film. We do remember that game, yes. Now, how many times did the Seahawks sack Aaron Rodgers in that game? Oh. Six, seven, or eight? How many bullshit. times? Six, seven, or eight? <laughs> it's, not bu- they... it's not bullshit. It's a perfectly acceptable question. I think so, too. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> An extra point awarded to Matthew for kissing um... the butt of the ref. <laughs> I, I, made, I actually made a um i made a do you remember the song sit down by james i remember yeah you did a video i'm sure i made a video of that you did um, i need to ask i'm gonna ask the kids okay mosette said six a little mo said seven no 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 <laughs> That um, will not do. Just to say, yeah, indeed. Just to say, also a very happy birthday to little Mo for this week. Happy birthday, oh. mate. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to say uh, eight. He's going to say eight, just because yes. it's, it's little Mo's birthday, and he doesn't want to. Yes. And, and because it was the right answer. Eight times. <laughs> yep. I actually remember that. I remember. Oh that. my gosh, Matt. Who could forget it? Matt's on the board. That was crazy. Did we have six at halftime? I think Will's going to yep. get this one. I think Will's going to get this one. Oh, th- way to set me up, Moses. Yeah, here you go. Well, because, okay, it's about the Packers, and you've been to Green Bay, so. In what year were the Packers founded? 1909, 1912, or 1919? What year were the Green Bay Packers founded? 1909, 1912, or 1919? They well, since, well, since they're wearing a... Uh... 100-year anniversary patches ah. on their jerseys this year. I'm going to guess uh, 1919. You know what? You know, it's funny you say that because that's exactly what Little Mo said. Um, Mo said. Little Mo said 1919. You said 1919. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. See, easy. Yay! Easy peasy. All right. Uh, lemon squeezy. Uh, that was lemon deduced squeezy. like Ace Ventura. I sense a centennial patch. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. Like a glove. All oh, right. Oh, like a glove. It is time now for the final question. Question. All right, final question. High, low, again, the closest without going over gets two points. Will at two points, Matt and Mark at one, and Dustin at zero. So the order will go Dustin, Mark, Matt, and then Will. Um, and this is your final question. Are you ready, Dustin? Put down nope, to Google. Not doing it. Put down to Google. No. Here we go. <laughs> I gotta turn my I gotta turn my stuff on. Hold on. Yeah. In the <laughs> NFC Championship game against the Packers, what was Russell Wilson's quarterback rating? The quarterback rating for Russell Wilson in the NFC Championship game, Dustin. Oh God, he was so bad in the first half. No, uh, fifty-eight point seven. Fifty-eight point seven. Mark. Yes. Quarterback rating for Russell Wilson in the NFC Championship. Quarterback rating. Wow, that was a rough. It uh, was a rough game. Mm. Um, I'm gonna say uh, I'll go 55. Mark goes 55. Matt, quarterback mm-hmm. rating for Russell Wilson. 122. No. <laughs> <laughs> point point seven tenths. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I'll go. Let's go even lower. Let's let's pretend it was really bad. Okay. I'll go fifty-two. 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 Fifty-
two and fifty cents. Actually, no, I'll go fifty cents. <laughs> I'll go fifty cents. <laughs> no, what, 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 what are you doing? I'll go fifty. Fifty. Oh, okay. Because fifty cents. Oh, there you do. Yeah, I got it. Get the joke. Fifty you points here. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I'm All right. Weak. Well, here's Tell where me. we stand. Fifty-eight point seven. Fifty-five point zero. Fifty point zero. What was Russell Wilson's quarterback rating in the NFC Championship game against the Packers? I am going to go 58.8. Oh. He's price is right at him. He's price is right at him. All right. <laughs> Rough. I love that song. The, uh, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> well, the quarterback rating for Russell Wilson in the NFC Championship was 44.3. No. Oh, that is nasty. <laughs> you know what it means. I don't remember it being that bad. <laughs> God save the queen, that baby. Is, that has got to be a record for lowest passer that is bad. in a winning performance in a championship No doubt. Game. I knew Can it I... was low because the first half was trash. <laughs> Can I say that Aaron Rodgers was, was a 55.8, which is almost exactly what Will said. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. It would have been funny if I nailed Rodgers. Uh, um, that would have been funny. You read the wrong script. Place for a stutter. Man, place <laughs> for a stutter. All this time, the if I had nailed Rodgers' quarterback rating. All this time. <laughs> who knew? Mike, I thought all the gay jokes were for Matt. But who knew? Matt had it. Matt knew it all along, uh, Matt. Hey, Matt, type you up a new, uh, order yourself oh. a new trophy there, buddy. Yes. All right, this has been uh, another crowd pleasing. Bad place for a stutter. <laughs> a crowd pleasing, <laughs> hard stepping, award winning edition of your 12 man fan jam show halftime trivia. On the world? On the world. We'll be back <laughs> on the second half of the show. Sex Pistols, take us out. <laughs> I thought that was an amazing place uh, for a stutter, actually. Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. I'm surrounded by idiots! Idiots! Holy sh! It's the third quarter! Everybody, everybody needs to go and watch Aaron Rodgers on draft day. You know, when he complains about not getting draft first. 2005, the way he looks at, at um, Alex Smith on the, on the bus when he takes a picture of him. Oh, it's all over that. So I'm not surprised that that was no way. at all. No, dude, Alex was the so dom and he was the sub. Because have wow. you seen Olivia Mon? She is <laughs> smoking, dude. There's no way. Yeah. I really know it's Kevin, though. You know that, don't you? <laughs> He's on the rebound being with Patrick. All right. Well, hey, be that as it may, welcome to the third quarter of your 12-man fan jam show. Hey, you. Yes, you doubling up in laughter. Like, share, and subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Please join our Facebook group, 12 Men Fan Jam Show. Do it now before we double down on the kerfuffle. Too late for that. All right, this quarter, we are going to make our game score predictions, our prognostications, and, of course, our game balls for the upcoming Sunday game against the Rams. Uh, our picks with 12, Team 12, we'll start with Team 12. Jose, 35-31 Hawks. Game ball to Lockett, Thompson, INT. Tom with the Rams. 34-21 Rams. Uh, Wilson will be responsible for all three TDs. We'll be playing from behind all day. Game ball to Wilson. Uh, Little Mo, 31-24 Seahawks. And his prognostication, I'm going to allow it. CJ Procise will not get injured afterwards. Uh, <laughs> which is weak, but I'm going to get to it. Wait, what? Well, say, you, wait, predicting CJ Procise does not get injured is not so a weak prediction. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty weak. Uh, Wilson game ball when all else fails, just call on the man in charge. All right. Mark Ty Turner, you know, I have been bad luck when seeing the Hawks live since 2013. This week, I won't be anywhere near there. My flight to Seattle um, on Friday for some family business. I'll be in Seattle while they're in L.A. and then fly back Wednesday, thus avoiding being in Seattle completely for the Packer game. I'm hoping this gives us a split. First game, Rams 31, Hawks 20. Uh, game ball to Russ who has a few miracles with Carson out. He says the game will be closer than expected. That's not a prognostication, so I can't count that. But uh, So no prognostication, but that's all right. Uh, Mike Pascal, 
We're injured and on the road. A good time to surprise the world, but I'm going to reverse psychology and help us win by saying the Goats win 27 to 17 over the Hawks. Prediction, Goff will be sacked at least twice, and he's going with Clark as his game ball. All right, Matt. Yes. Your Rams score prediction and game ball, please. Now, there's been a technical error, Moses. I'm just going to point this out to you now. Because I, ac- I wrote all this down beforehand, and I accidentally just closed it down, and I just need to get that back up. Bear with me! Bear, okay. with, me. Bear with me, it's back. It's back, it's back. No panic, everybody. Seahawks. <gasps> uh, now, we need to win this. I'm going to tell you now, there's no point There's no point predicting losses at this point in the season. We need to win this if we're going to get to playoffs. Right. So, um, I'm going to say Seahawks 27, Rams 24. Okay. I'm going to give my game ball to Wilson, because I think he's going to have to bounce back from that hor- horror show that he had. <laughs> Um, yeah. Last week, although I have to say I don't think sticking that enormous giant sticking plaster on his arm helped anything. Just so, yeah, it didn't. What he needed was a little Winnie the Pooh plaster or something. Amen. Um, prognostication: last second desperate field goal to win. It's going to be one of those horrible nail biter at the very last second, two seconds to go. You know, Seabass comes out, kicks from like you know our own thirty. Wow, or whatever. beautiful. It'd be well horrific. Done. Yeah, nice, thanks. Nice. Then that would be fun. Um, after last week, I need another another heart racing game. Well. Ah! What do you got for us? <laughs> um, well, since we're uh, having a slightly different format, I'd like to take the opportunity to do a quick shout out uh, to my beautiful niece, Lydia. Uh, we're recording on Friday, November 9th, and it is her 18th birthday Yay! today. Yay! So, happy, happy birthday, happy Lydia. Love you, happy Beetlejuice. Birthday. Uh, well yeah, no, different. No, different. Person, oh, different so. Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There, there's more than one, Dustin. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, prediction, whatnot. Let's hope I can get through this without stuttering. Um, and unfortunately, the uh, Team 12 uh, stole my predicted score, my prognos- prognostication, and my game balls, but I'm sticking with them anyway because I don't care. Yeah. Um, Matt is right that the Seahawks need to start winning and start winning now, but we need to start winning the posse prediction challenge. So I'm yes. going to yes. call this yeah. with my head and not my heart and say Rams 31, Seahawks 20. Oh. I think our injured players are just going to be a bit too much to overcome, unfortunately. Yeah. However, I do think Goff will try to pick on Tedrick Thompson, and Thompson will respond with his first career INT. Okay. Uh, and my game ball, if we do win, it's going to have to go to Russell Wilson because he's going to have to play lights out. All right. Well done. Stats man Mark. Yes. Well, again, we have to look at these. these <laughs> we have to look at this <laughs> objectively, and uh, we have to do know, something. Yeah, we have yeah. to do something quick. Uh, I, I, no, I'll, I'll refrain from Dreyfus because okay. that horse is still. Well, there's no pulse there, but I'm waiting. No. Um. Anyway, for the game, because <laughs> anyway, um. So for this game, you know, I think it's going to be competitive, but ultimately. Uh, I see this as Rams 27, Seattle 23. Um, I'm going to give my game ball to Davis. And um, and I'll say that Richard Penny, this is actually legit. I mean, he'll have over 50 yards rushing. So given who that is, that's a, that's a yeah, respectable that's, that's, number. I can go with that. <laughs> well done. Uh, Dustin. Yeah, Baldwin came on pretty strong last week. I'm going to say he's going to have 100 yards receiving this week. Okay. Nice. Um, I think he's going to get a game ball. And the score, though, uh, I, I, I'm kind of with Will like this. I, I just I don't, I don't see us beating those guys. Okay. That being said, Seahawks 21-17. <laughs> Good man. Good man. Nice. Nice. All right, it's my turn. So the Seahawks travel down Sunday to the land of casting couches and waitress wannabe actresses Los Angeles. Los Angeles literally translates into the excess, I believe. I have not, I'm not very good in Spanish. Uh, the Rams fans do a great job of showing up for their team dressed up like fans of other teams. <laughs> and, of course, I can't blame them because the only bunch of burly uniform guys they line up for in L.A. are the ones at Chippendales on two-for-one night. No. Football-wise, and to the apparent caring of nobody in the City of Angels, the Rams are putting together a nice regular season. Note I said regular season. Until they win a playoff game, they're no better than the Browns in my book. (laughs) (laughs) That's rampant, baby. The Seahawks are going to give this team fits, and I see that continuing for the next few years. Watch my game ball, Nick Vanette. K 
catch a Ooh. touchdown pass, my prognostication. I like that. Oh, the Seahawks were close last time. This time, like a sweetest massage, they finished the job. <laughs> Ram it, L.A. The Seahawks win this game by a score of Seahawks 34, Rams Ooh. 30. Oh. Book it. Book it. Moses, All what right. was your prognostication? Sorry. Uh, touchdown catch for Bennett. And ah, Bennett right. is my game ball. It. Yeah. All right. That's the third quarter. It's the end of the third quarter, bitches. Coming up next, we got another game to talk about. Predictions, prognostications, and game balls for the Thursday night Packers game. You are listening to 12 Man Fan Jam Show. It doesn't hurt too much. We'll be right back after this. Not about any flashbacks. Too much. Hello, everybody. This is Statsman Mark. And when I'm not listening to Charo's greatest hits on 8-track tape, I'm listening to the 12-man Fan Jam Show. Holy sh! It's the fourth quarter! So, like, Kona is away at college. Do you have to get her a meal plan, or is there a dorm she stays at with, like, other dogs, or how's that work out? Um, meal plan, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um... Other dogs, yes. I actually, dude, I had to spend a ton of time putting up like 70-something Ziploc bags of dog food. Wow. Like separated wow. for each meal. So, yeah. Wow. Good for her <laughs> that she get home cooking. A lot of work. Yeah. Hey, yeah. welcome back to the fourth and final quarter of this episode of your 12-Man Fan Jam Show. In this quarter, we are going to make our predictions, prognostications, and our game balls for the upcoming Thursday game against the Packers. However... There's going to be a little bit of a twist. Ooh. Yes! We're, because this game is after another game, it's really hard to come up with. The the scores, whatever your scores you get, will be doubled. Yes, I said doubled for the Packers game. That's so like two game, times as much. That's twice as many as normal. <laughs> Thank you, Yogi Berra. All right. So, here we go. Uh, let's start with Team 12, Jose. Jose says for the Packers game, 27-23, uh, game ball to Clark, uh, and Russ will get more passing yards than Rodgers in that game. That's pretty, pretty uh, it's daring. Bold. Yeah. It's bold. Mm. It's bold. Uh, Tom, Green Bay game, 24-20 uh, Seattle. Um, this is a hope. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. Then. <laughs> Carson with two TDs and game ball to Carson. Apparently thinks Carson's going to heal. Could happen. A uh, little Mo, listen to this, 38-3. Yeah. Seattle, three sets. What? Clark with a game ball. He said they're going to just absolutely destroy Rodgers on Thursday night. Mark Ty wow. Turner, Hawks 24, Packers 21, game ball to Carson, who comes back. And his prognostication, I'm not going to count, which is Rodgers will be seen bitching in the post-game press conference about coming to Seattle for a Thursday night game. Sorry, dude. That's not going to happen. All right. Too obvious. Yeah. Mike Pascal, score 24-23, Hawks over Green Bay. Doug uh, Baldwin with a touchdown. Game ball to the punter, Dixon. Interesting. He also put bonus prediction. Rogers gets disgusted about something, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, Team Posse, Matt. Yes. Uh, game ball, prognostication, and prediction, please. Can I do a little shout out first? Sorry. Of course. No. I would like to do a little shout no. out to. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Is someone listening right now? Yes. Somebody right, will ahead. be listening to this because I shall tell her to do so. Um, can I give a big shout out to my sister? who, as I'm sure people should know, she's a Carolina Panthers fan. Yes, she is. And they got their asses kicked Ooh. last night, 52 to 21. <laughs> yes, they did. Ouch. So just a shout out to say, girl, that's a lot of numbers. you got a lot of numbers there. <laughs> um, you might want to get a defender out there sometime ooh. tonight. Just a lot of numbers from the yeah. Big Ben all over That's you. seven touchdowns. Ooh. Yeah. Matt, time, people. Matt, did you see hmm? Newton's post-game getup? Oh my I god. haven't. What was he wearing? Oh my god, you have to see it. It's I, I can believe he, anyway. As a fashion, <laughs> I'm gonna have a look for the fashion so we can pick that when we see Yeah, him. we're gonna have to find that. It. It's like um, no wonder the guy lost by 30 something points the way he was dressed after the game. Not surprising. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um uh Green Bay, yes. Yeah. So Seahawks um 17. Okay. Uh Green Bay 14. All right. Well game ball to Baldwin. Okay. Prognostication: Baldwin gets his first touchdown of the regular season. No. Oh. Baldwin gets a touchdown. 
He hasn't, this will be his first one, won't it? He hasn't had one since. So far, isn't no, but if he You're catches correct. one the other game, you'll still get it if Baldwin just catches the touchdown. Oh, okay. But yeah, when Baldwin gets yeah. touchdown, but I think it will be his first one. I don't think he'll score. Okay. Close. Fair enough. Will. Yes, sir. Game ball prediction, prognostication, please. My prediction is that Seattle bounces back strong after two uh, losses to uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Green Bay does not play well on the road, and since it's a color rush game, our uniforms will fuse all of their retinas uh, <laughs> by the third quarter. Okay. And as such, uh, I have Seattle winning 34 to 20. Good. Prognostication, I'm uh, going with the theme here. Uh, and only this time I'm saying Trey Flowers will have his first career interception. Nice. And my game ball is going to Bobby Wagner. Nice. Mm -hmm. Me likey. Stats my mark. Yes, I agree that we will rebound for this game. I think it's going to be still a little bit of a shootout because Rodgers is always good enough to make it interesting. So I have a 31-27 Seattle. Mm -hmm. And a uh, game ball to RW. Okay. I'm going out on a limb on that one, I know. Um, and then Just a smidge. The prognostication is that CJ Or Pro a prognostication, will... depending on what part of the country you're from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, my my prediction. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> CJ Procise will be breathing. Wow. Oh come this on. This point, this point, point. No, I feel like that's a relevant prognostication. That is super relevant. No, okay. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm kidding. I know. That, that was, I know. I was I was setting up the the, the real one. Which, up in the which, air, which, you know. Uh, RW uh, three TDs, either a combination of passing and running. Three TDs for RW. All right, but if ProSize does stop breathing, I want him to get points. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fair I, know, enough. I know. Like if ProSize shows up to anything relevant to what's happening with the team, that's uh that's Everybody a point for us. <laughs> Dustin. You get a point. You get a point. <laughs> yeah. Dustin, prediction, prognostication, and game ball, please. Uh which game? Packers. Packers. Hmm. Um I'll call Seahawks twenty eight. 21. Okay. I'll say that Doug Baldwin is going to continue his reign of dominance because he's going to get his shit together and be able to play. Okay. Um, so he's going to have two touchdowns and he's going to get my game ball. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it's Baldwin game too. Well done. And now it's my turn. Thursday night and the Packers. Aaron Rodgers, who looks like an older brother of the intern from The Office who dated Mindy Kaling's character. Nothing? That's, that's nope. deep, man. That's right. Deep. Oh, okay. Well, of course, if it was a reference to, like, porn movies or the kids' animated shows about Game of Thrones, robots, Game of you guys would be all over it. But no, I talk about an important sitcom and nobody gets it. Anyway, uh, where Pretty was much. I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and his secret life partner come into Seattle on Thursday night to play the Seahawks. <laughs> Head coach Mike McCarthy. Life partner. Head coach Mike McCarthy, who always looks like the the guy that has too many veggies on his dinner plate and not enough bratwurst. <laughs> Bring in a team that is barely hanging on to the playoff hopes, kind of like the Seahawks. That's cruel. Watch my game ball. Are you ready for this? Watch my game ball. CJ Procise. No. That's right. Wow. I what? went there. Where and not policy. only wow. that. My prognostication is in the Packers game, he's going to score a touchdown. That's no. right. Count it. It's he's madness, I tell score. you. That's madness, but you know points. what? You know why it's madness? Because it's our house. It's our house, oh, baby. Love this song. Madness in our house. Our house and the Seahawks stay in the middle of the playoff race by winning by a score of Seahawks 27, Packers 21. Book it. It's our house, baby. I think Moses should, should get triple should, points if that gets. You, you should get a point if he just is activated for the game. No, right. no shit. I should. I should. Yeah, totally. God, that, that's seriously a religion. I'm pretty sure I can made, make up a disease he's going to have. Hey, he's a great spot. prognostication. Hey, he's not going to be You get a point because he was activated. It'd be so awesome. <laughs> go hike or go home. All right. Hey. <laughs> it is high, looks... and then there's a high. <laughs> <laughs> Are you high? I'm pretty sure he's gonna have glaucoma. 
a rectal glaucoma <laughs> for that game. Well, because his then he's going to close his eyes and just run to daylight, baby. Woo. All right. Hey, it looks like it's time to bring another amazing 12 man fan jam show to a close. We hope you uh, are glad you decided to join us. Uh, we hope you want, uh, you had a good time wasting some time with us. We certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe you learned a little something. What did we learn? Well, we learned we hate the Rams. Uh, we learned Stevens has a foot thing. I never figured out what that was. Um, <laughs> we, we learned that they're, they're lining around the block to play the Cowboys. Maybe the line of the year. Um, and, and Will learned that he wants to nail Rodgers. I had no idea. <laughs> Neither did I. I mean, you know, and we learned that Kona's a big sweetie. A big sweetie. So, Who's a good girl? She's a good girl. Who's a, a big, big girl. sweetie? <laughs> On behalf of my partner, Cry Matt. You have all obviously never met her. <laughs> <laughs> our news hound. She's a big sweetie. She's hanging off my arm. Yeah. Uh, our news hound, Shadowhawk Will. Statsman Mark Dustin as the beaver. Mike Pascal. Roger Goodell. Mark Ty Turner, Jose, Tom, Moset, Little Mo, Vince Ferragamo, Lynn Dickey. This is Moses. <laughs> Lynn Dickey. Say it wow. Next yeah. time. Oh, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> Lynn you big sweetie. Who's a good podcast? Who's, Who's a good podcast? He's a good girl. He's a good girl. A good girl. Oh no, she's an asshole though. She's she's an absolute <laughs> asshole. <laughs>